Welcome to Dialysis Nurses Supporting Nurses, and today we're going to talk acid, specifically liquid acid concentrate, one of the parts that makes dialysate. So just kind of a fun refresher, dialysate is made out of acid, bicarbonate, and water. And as an elder millennial, I think I am tech savvy enough to have this on in the background so we can go through the ingredients together. So that's really all this video is is looking at the ingredients and then talking about it. Like what is in acid, liquid acid for dialysis? Because it's, <laughs> I think it's fun to talk dialysis with other dialysis nurses and dialysis techs and physicians and, and the care team. Like, oh, should they be on a 3K or 2K? What, what's their calcium bath? Like, oh. just the banter is so much fun. Like, oh my God, they had me run them on a 1K for two hours. It's just like, what does that mean? So let's talk about it. <sighs> let's just, we'll just look, go through it from top to bottom. So the top left, it says one gallon or 3.7 liter. So we have one gallon. My initial thought is like, how does one gallon last through like a whole dialysis treatment when we're doing 600 mils per minute? There's no way that this is gonna last. So we'll find our answers as we go on. 45 X, I don't know what that means. Maybe we'll find out as we keep going on. Ah. Next, 3K, 2.5 calcium. I know what that means. It means it has three calcium. No, it means it has three potassium, 2.5 calcium in it. Great, we'll get into that a little bit more. We see who makes it, we see its label, and then indications for use. This acid concentrate is formulated to be used in conjunction with a sodium bicarbonate concentrate in a 45X proportioning, proportioning three stream hemodialysis machine. Cool. All right, now we're getting to the fun part. Electrolyte composition. Here we go. Undiluted in, in the like gallon as it is. Sodium, 100 milliequivalents. And then we go to the right, final dialysate. So that means after it's all mixed with the water and the bicarbonate, it's 137. Sodium, 137. What else is sodium, 137? Ah, blood, blood, our normal blood Sodium is like 137, 138, give or take a few. Cool, and we can set that, we can change that in our settings, but depending on like what the patient's sodium level is, like if they're a little hyponatremic, low sodium levels, we don't wanna correct them too fast. So then we might run them at like a 135 sodium to, to raise their sodium safely. Because raising their sodium, sodium too fast, I believe can cause seizures. And it's it just, we have to do it slow. Potassium, three milliequivalents. Final dialysate, three milliequivalents. Okay, so nothing's changed there. And this is where diffusion comes into play. We know normal potassium levels are 3.5 to five, and we're, we're lower than normal blood potassium levels. Sodium was normal, potassium is lower. And why is that? Now we, we're getting into diffusion, something moving from an area of higher concentration to lower concentration. So dialysis patients have higher potassium levels and this has lower potassium levels. Let's say I'm on dialysis and my potassium's five. Hook me up to dialysis. My higher concentration of potassium is gonna cross that semipermeable membrane and go into the waste. So that's gonna help pull out that high potassium. So now we think of like these 1K baths less common used. I mean, I've, I've still used them for high potassium, but it's usually for a short amount of time, one hour or two, one hour or two hours. And, and we're checking their potassium frequently because dropping the potassium too low is gonna cause problems, right? It's also gonna cause cardiac arrhythmias. Nobody, it, from my experience, like nobody is like in the clinic setting has a prescription for a 1K bath. And if they do, we're checking their potassium all the time, at least weekly. And hopefully those patients are also on our potassium lower, lowering medications, Valtessa, Wilkelma. Next, calcium, 2.5. Final dialysate, 2.5. Now, normal potassium is a little higher, right? It's like 8.5 to 10.3. So this is a lot lower. So this must diffuse a little bit differently than the potassium, right? Because and from my experience, depending, some patients have lower calcium levels and some people have higher calcium levels. Just some patients run low, some patients run high. I've gone in between a two calcium, 2.25 calcium and a two five calcium. And 
if we want to raise the calcium, we're going to like, or not drop it too low, we're going to like a three calcium. So the diffusion must not be as efficient with this, it seems to me. I mean, I guess that's what my logic is telling me, but I can't, I can't always trust my logic. So that's, that's interesting. That might be something I'll read more on. Hmm, this one's fun. Next is magnesium. One, dilute, and then final dialysate, one. Hmm, so what do we know about magnesium? We know that magnesium's normal is like around two, 1.5 to two. If we're using the rule of diffusion, higher concentration to lower concentration, I believe magnesium has a hard time being excreted from the kidneys for dialysis patients. So this is gonna help prevent a buildup in, in, of magnesium. One thing I'm noticing that's not on here is phosphorus. And we know dialysis patients tend to have a higher phosphorus, hence having the phosphorus binder. So phosphorus must not uh, easily diffuse over the semi-permeable me membrane here either. Oh gosh, I'm having so much fun. Chloride, 106.5. So nothing is changing here, acetate. So acetate is the acid. Uh, I'll see either acetate or citrate. Acetate is most common. People that are on like the citrate, like this liquid acid concentrate made out of citrate, they're like the clotters. Like citrate has, helps prevent clotting of the, of the circuit. So those are usually, that is usually safe for the our, our clotters. But usually most dialysis settings, we use acetate as the acid. Dextrose, oh, so I think this is optional. You're not gonna find this in all liquid acid concentrate in 100. And our normal blood sugar is between 80 and 120. So it's like right in the middle. So I wonder if, I wonder if glucose crosses that semi-permeable membrane. At least it crosses out of the bloodstream and out. So it's not gonna cause hyperglycemia and it shouldn't really cause hypoglycemia either. Cool. Bicarbonate, all right. Dilute, zero, right? Acetate is the acid, bicarbonate is the base, zero. Once it's mixed, 37 milliequivalents. Oh, this is so much fun. All right. I don't know what the things on the right mean. Concentrate composition grams per liter. Okay, instructions. This is where I really am having fun. Uh, mix thoroughly, refer to hemodialysis machines instructions on verifying conductivity and pH prior to use in dialysis. Okay, we do that. We check the pH and we check the conductivity. And oh, use this is where this this will make sense in a second. So machine color. So the proportion of dialysate is one volume of this acid with 1.72 parts of the bicarbonate and 42.28 parts water. One to 1.72 to 42.28. So that's why we don't run out of acid right away because we're not doing, we're only using one part, like it's mostly water. It seems, dialysate is mostly water, which is telling me why water safety is so important. It's just, ah, oh, this is, I'm learning a lot from this. Oh, I hope you guys are too. And the next thing, I really want to talk about, because I, I had to do some reading before this video, which is just the honest truth. I, I had a hard time understanding why the pH of our dialysis machine needs to be like between 7.2, 7.4, and normal pH is, of our blood is like 7.35 to 7.45. So why, if dialysis patients are just, are acidic in general, have metabolic acidosis in general, why is the pH of the machine lower? Wouldn't you want to think it would be higher to help bring their acidity back to normal? Like that didn't make sense to me. And then after doing some reading, it's all about diffusion. So we have hydrogen ions causing the acidity in, in our bloodstream as dialysis patients. If I have a lower acidity, lower hydrogen ions in the dialysate, the pH is lower. The rule of diffusion is an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. So the hydrogen ions in, our, in the blood of the metabolic acidotic dialysis patient, the hydrogen ions are gonna move out of the body and into the waste of the dialysate. The dialysate's gonna pull that out. So it's gonna lower, so it's gonna remove the hydrogen ions, remove the acidic part of the blood, thus raising the pH. And then on the flip side, the bicarbonate is gonna move into the, the bloodstream, out of the dialysate into the bloodstream and bicarbonate is basic. So that is how dialysis helps 
helps resolve the meta metabolic acidosis for dialysis patients. Oh, this is so much fun. All right, so we talked about what's in dialysate or what's in the acid, then we have the bicarbonate, and then we have the pH, and then we have conductivity. Conductivity is always, I wanna say fascinating, but really just confusing to all of us because conductivity, it's like sodium. The sodium conductivity, I don't really, I'm sure it has something to do with sodium. Sodium, sodium makes water conductive, and then they call it conductivity. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. I don't know about logic though. Logically, it makes sense, but that's that's what I'm going with. So this is just for education, educational purposes. And then we have the expiration date. So fortunately, these uh, acid concentrates are good, have a long shelf life, which is, uh, I think, awesome. Less waste. All right. Oh, I hope you guys had so much fun. I did. I'll see you guys next time.